Hey, welcome back to Zombie Tactics, part three of this series, Never Intended, Never Imagined, or I think I alternately titled one of them, Never Imagined, Never Intended. doesn't matter. It's the same series. It's YouTube. What do you want? Uh, and what this series is about is about the whole concept that people will bring up, or the idea, the meme, the notion, that somehow we cannot apply the Second Amendment today because we've got all this super advanced weaponry now that the Founding Fathers never intended or never could have imagined that we'd have, and for that reason it doesn't make sense for us to apply the Second Amendment to cover the kinds of weaponry we have today. Well, in the first part, I went to the basic philosophical inconsistency of that idea, given that the way the Constitution was written and the Bill of Rights, including things like the principle of enumerated uh, powers, that the Constitution was a document meant to limit the power of government, not to mention, not to limit the power of the people. They were very specific when they wanted to be. They were not specific when it came to the Second Amendment, and so we can assume that they didn't mean to be specific. The specifics were important. You have a right to keep and bear arms, and it, shan't, it shall not be infringed, period. Go back and watch the video. There's much more detail to it than that if you're just kind of uh, newly introduced to this series. The second part, I went into the idea of whether or not the Founding Fathers intended us to have weaponry that was as good as, or in some cases, better than what the military would have. And we pretty much put that idea to bed. I'm not going to say much about it, except you should watch part two if you really want to challenge that idea that we were, as citizens, intended to have weaponry every bit as good as what the military has. Keep in mind that we are already at the point in this society where we don't have weaponry that is as good as the military. They have all kinds of stuff that we don't have. We do not have, actually, assault rifles. We have stuff that people want to pretend are assault rifles because it suits their political goals, and that's about it. Watch part two if you really want all the detail on that. Um, this is part three, and part three is about a singular concept, and it is about whether or not the Founding Fathers could have or did imagine that we, will have, that we would have the kind of quote-unquote advanced weaponry that we have today. And I'm putting that in quotes for a very important reason. It'll become clear as we go along here. Well, let's put this in context. The Founding Fathers certainly did not have access to the kinds of technology that we have today. The printing press was something, as I've said before, that used movable type and wooden letters and you put it on a thing, you only print one page at a time. Frankly, a modern copy machine is so much more advanced than that, it's ridiculous. They didn't have TV, they didn't have the internet, they certainly didn't have YouTube, the thing that I'm using to communicate with you today. But certainly we always take a look at the First Amendment as protecting all of the modern conveniences that we have today for communication, whether it's freedom of press, freedom of speech, anything like that. It, it, the fact that we have new modern things doesn't matter. But even so, maybe the idea of weaponry is a little different. So let's take a look at that and see whether it really makes any sense that the Founding Fathers never imagined or never intended that we would have weaponry that was a lot better than what they had in those days. Well, right off the bat, let's consider the following. I'm talking to you on a technology that is several generations removed from the technology that they had at the time. There was no telegraph at that time. There were no printing presses that could print at high speeds. There was no such thing as color photography or even black and white photography. No moving pictures, nothing like that. No radio, no television, no internet, none of that. Uh, you know, so what we have today compared to what they have then, it's like it's a whole you know, order of magnitude or several orders of magnitude different. By comparison, when we're talking about firearms, what did they basically have at that time? They had a piece of equipment that was either a rifle or a musket that fired a piece of metal out of a tube at a high rate of speed so that you could hit a target, hurt a target, hunt or kill with it, frankly, um, and that it was pushed out that tube by explosive powder. That is exactly what we have today, still. We don't have technology that is, whoa, it's a whole order of magnitude different than what they had in those days. It's not like we have some kind of, you know, pulse laser in the 40 gigawatt range or, you know, phasers and death rays and things like that that, that were completely beyond their imagination. What we have today is simply an improvement, a pretty obvious improvement on the technology that they had in the day, that you would, in essence, be able to load weapons faster, that you'd be able to fire them more accurately, and that you could maybe fire more times without reloading. Now, maybe that's a notion that you want to challenge. But I want to, I want to tell you about a few technological things that give us a clue to let us know that the Founding Fathers didn't have any trouble at all imagining 
the kind of stuff that we might have today. And it's just a logical extension of what they had today, rather than the whole, wow, completely different planet of, of communications that we've got today and other technologies versus what they had then. Um, in around the early 1700s, we saw the first evidence of a gun that had two things going for it. One was that it could be fired several times without reloading it. And the second thing about it was it was reloaded instead of shoving, you know, paper and lead balls down the end of a rifle or a, a musket or a pistol. It was reloaded with a disc. And this is something called the Puckle Gun. And the Puckle Gun was invented by a guy by the name of Puckle, and he was granted a patent by the King of England for this Puckle Gun. And the idea behind it was that you had a disc, and on that disc were somewhere between six or nine, and it's rumored to be as many as 20 or more, uh, positions that had tubes, very similar in some ways to what a modern revolver works like, and that you would rotate each of those tubes into place in front of the barrel, and then you would fire that off with a piece of punk or a coal or a, a, even a lighted match in each position. Not going into a lot of detail about that because there were several different versions of the Puckle Gun. Early versions were pretty primitive and you had to like, boom, fire it one time, kind of unscrew the disc a little bit, move the next disc into place, do that, and then, and then fire it again. It was still much faster than loading a pistol or a musket would have been at that time. But later versions allowed you to simply kind of operate a little lever or a hand crank and just go kaboom, 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 kaboom. And you could do it, as I said, six times, nine times, or more. And then at that point in time, you'd have to very quickly unscrew this disc, hand that off to somebody, grab another disc, put it on there, and screw that back on there again. And it would be kaboom, 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 moving this disc around. So at a time before the Founding Fathers were even born, or most of them weren't born yet, I think Benjamin Franklin would have been by that time, we already had guns that were capable of being fired several times without reloading. And they were reloaded, not by shoving more crap down the end of the barrel, but by replacing some kind of a cartridge or disc or magazine or whatever you want to call it. That's you know, the early 1700s, a full 60, 70 years before the Declaration of Independence and the, the uh, Constitution were initially uh, signed and then later ratified, of course, in the case of the, the Second Amendment in 1791 or 92, I believe, if memory's working right for me. So, you know, several decades before that came about, there was already this technology available. Now, you could say to yourself, you don't believe that technology was out there for them to be aware of, that this was just some rare oddity or whatever, but certainly it was around well before the time that the Constitution and the Second Amendment were written. Now, this, the Founding Fathers were smart guys, and on top of being smart guys, they were reading all the time and researching stuff all the time. Thomas Jefferson is rumored to have spent every spare moment of his time that he wasn't doing something else in his studies, he used to carry around with him a portable desk where he'd have a, a book or two that he was working on and, and careful things to take notes. As a matter of fact, the portable desk was something that he invented along with other things that he invented having to do with how you would thresh grain. And of course, we've got Benjamin Franklin who invented the bifocals and something that was considered the absolute marvel of its time, the, um, the lightning rod, which for the first time in history allowed people to not always run around being afraid when they saw lightning that it was going to burn their barn down. And Benjamin Franklin invented all kinds of things. These were inquisitive guys. They were so inquisitive and they were so creative and they were so imaginative that they invented an entirely new form of government based upon the idea that the people have all the power and the government only have whatever power the people let them have. To, I, to, to suggest that they didn't have any imagination doesn't make sense. And to suggest that there's no way that they could have been event in, uh, aware of something like the Puckle Gun that had been around for, gosh, five, six centuries before they were all getting together in Philadelphia to write the, uh, the Declaration of Independence. And, of course, later on they worked on the Constitution. That just doesn't make sense. Now, you can still say, though, and it's, it's a fair thing to say, well, that's not proof that they knew about the Puckle Gun, and that's not proof that they would imagine the kinds of technology that we have today. But this is where I have to bring something else to your attention. There was another guy by the name of Benton. And Benton, incidentally, was a gunsmith who lived in Philadelphia, where they actually signed the Declaration of Independence. And Benton invented what he called an improved gun. And here's the big features about the improved gun. It was a muzzle-loading gun. But what it had going for it was the following thing. You pulled the trigger once, and it would fire eight 
16 or 20 times without reloading it from pulling the trigger once. It was, in fact, a machine gun by any realistic definition of that word. As a matter of fact, it's often included in the history of the machine gun. And not only did Benton invent this gun, he demonstrated it to members of the Continental Congress, and he demonstrated how you could pull the trigger one time, and it would go pop, 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 and fire eight rounds, or pop, 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 16, pop, 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 you know, 20 rounds, up to 20 rounds, he demonstrated that with one pull of the gun, one pull of the trigger, you could do this, and it did so quick, it did so so quickly, that it actually fired 20 lead balls in less than five seconds from pulling the trigger one time. Now that's faster than anybody can operate an AR-15 or any semi-automatic pistol or semi-automatic rifle that I'm aware of today, and it exceeds the 10-round capacity that's common in places like California by up to 10 rounds. It, in its smallest version, exceeds the number of rounds you're allowed today, apparently, in New York by one round. So to say, oh, well, they only wanted us to have what was available to them at the time, well, New York is already infringing upon those kinds of rights. California is already infringing upon those rights with their magazine restrictions. Nationwide, we're already infringing upon the right to own even the weaponry they had at the time, because at the time they had weaponry that you could pull the trigger once and fire 20 times in rapid succession. It was, in essence, a machine gun. And that was Benton's improved gun. Now you can say, well, Benton invented that gun in Philadelphia, and you say he demonstrated it to members of the Continental Congress, but there's no way you really know that. Well, actually, we do actually know that, and we know that for an important reason, because they signed the Declaration of, 1770, the Declaration of Independence in 1776, and there is a record in 1777 of the Continental Congress putting in an order for 100 of Benton's improved muskets for use by the new Continental Army. Now, Benton never actually delivered them to Congress, but the point is, delivered them to the, to the Continental Army because of cost and some other things, and frankly, the, the war didn't have a lot, we didn't have a lot of money for, the, for that kind of thing. Uh, we, have, we were having trouble getting guys boots and food. But the point is, in the, in the record, he sold this very gun to the American colonies through the very Congress that had just signed the Declaration of Independence. They were aware of a gun that could be fired 20 times by pulling the trigger once. They ordered a hundred of them. They ordered the eight round version, but there was a 16 and 20 round version available. And these were the very same guys who many people are saying, oh, they couldn't imagine a gun that would do something like fire 20 times without reloading it. By the way, Benton's improved gun was loaded from a single paper cartridge. So instead of having to load several at a time, you, load, you took one giant cartridge and you shoved it down the barrel and you were able to reload it fairly quickly. So we already had improvements in the technology that would allow us, as I showed in the last video, to fire more accurately because of rifling. We had improvements that we can show dating back to the early 1700s before that time that allowed you to fire a gun once more than once without reloading it, in the case of the Puckle gun. And in the case of Benton's improved gun, we had, in essence, a machine gun already at the time that the colonies were coming, becoming their own little country, becoming the United States of America. Now, they knew about all of this, and to say they didn't know about it is silly, because it, especially in Benton's case, it was presented before the very people who, in many cases, were the ones writing the Second Amendment and choosing to ratify it. Now, if you want to believe that they had a gun like Benton's improved gun that would fire 20 rounds in rapid succession, could be loaded from a single paper cartridge, loading faster, but they imagined, they couldn't imagine at a time that there would ever be in history that you would have a gun that would fire faster than that, or that you would have a gun that you could load quicker than that, maybe from some kind of a disc or magazine or something like that. I think you need to validate that opinion. You need to come up with something to back it up because the congressional record itself shows that, in fact, they did imagine and they did know of improvements in weapons technology. And what we have today is a very, very simple short step from the kind of technology that they had back then. They absolutely did imagine it, in my, in my opinion. They knew we would have better weaponry, and there's no, nothing that they said in the Second Amendment that said, oh, you can, oh, you can only have arms as long as they don't get too advanced, you know, or something like that. No. The Constitution says 
the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be even infringed upon. That's part three of this video, and I think we've put this whole notion to bed. That's zombie tactics for tonight. Keep your powder dry. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.